Hello friends, welcome back to Friend of Health. So today in this fifth episode of the conversation, we have an eminent personality, one of the very inspiring teacher of homeopathy, none other than Dr. V.K. Chauhan. I am very sure most of the audience of Friend of Health will be knowing him through his very useful book for the UPSC and MD preparation that it's titled as UPSC and MD in three volumes. So he's very well known to students all over India and uh, sir has given a lot of contributions to the system through his uh, research works, his practical knowledge sharing, his lectures, and he is a guru who is a, a guru of a lot of teachers. And I was very lucky enough to speak to him uh, and share some time, very quality time with him a few weeks back. And uh, I requested him for sharing his thoughts and knowledge uh, an updated uh, version of Material Medica approach, which he will be sharing with us in few videos. Uh, I just requested him and he agreed. And I feel very lucky and very privileged to have him here. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Today, sir will be uh, talking on Argent and Nitricum and how to approach it. So, sir will be first dealing with the conventional, the classical uh, Allen's keynote, which is not rearranged. And uh, today's episode will be having that uh, kind of presentation, how to segregate the classical uh, book of Allen's keynote. And later on, as the episodes continues in this series of lectures, sir will be speaking how we can approach the rearranged and classified version of Allen's keynote, which is there in use in this uh, latest uh, uh, edition by BJ. And uh, again, how to enrich this Allen's keynote. I am very sure it will help all the material medical students, not only the BHM students and interns, but all the postgraduates of material medical and other departments and uh, the practitioners who are seriously uh, desiring to learn material medica in a very useful way, practical way, by correlating, by updating the terminologies, the concepts, the hidden details in the material medica. So we know that Allen's keynote is just a uh, tip of an iceberg, but a lot of material medical knowledge, a lot of uh, therapeutics is hidden in that. So, sir will be enlightening, enlightening on this and we'll get an enriched way of approach, an updated way of approach to material medical learning. So, uh, I'm very sure this is going to help all the homeopathic students and please share this video with all your friends, watch this video fully and come up with your feedback and your suggestions. And uh, this lecture will not finish in one video. It will continue as few series. And uh, I would like to introduce Sir before we go into the video. Professor Dr. V.K. Chauhan, former principal, Dr. B.R. Sur Homeopathic Medical College Hospital and Research Center, Nanakpura, New Delhi. Professional and teaching experience. 45 years of clinical and teaching experience. Subjects, Anatomy, Practice of Medicine. Professor Nehru Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, Defense Colony, New Delhi. Principal, Dr. B. R. Sur, Homeopathic Medical College, Hospital and Research Center, Nanakpura, New Delhi. Sir has retired as principal from Dr. B. R. Sur, Homeopathic Medical College. Contributions. Principal investigator of collaborative extramural research project of Department of Ayush, Government of India and Delhi Homeopathic Anusandhan Parishad to evaluate the effect of homeopathic treatment on natural history of autoimmune thyroiditis. Examiner and paper setter for BHMS and MD examinations for number of universities. To name a few, University of Delhi, Punjab University, Baba Farid University, Farid Court, Maharishi, Dayanand University, Rohtak. Member of Delhi Homeopathic Anusandhan Parishad, Government of Delhi and of Academic Council of National Institute of Homeopathy, Government of India. Resource person for various reorientation training programs, CME programs, seminars and workshops 
in different homeopathic institutions and organizations from all over India. Ex-member of CCRH governing body, CCRH standing finance committee and CCRH scientific committee. Recipient of state award for meritorious service to the field of healthcare from Government of Delhi in February 2006. Recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award from Board of Homeopathic System of Medicine, Delhi in April 2009. WHO Fellowship from Royal London Homeopathic Hospital, London, UK, New England School of Homeopathy, Connecticut, USA, Management Sciences for Health, Arlington, USA in 1996. Publications Homeopathic Principles and Practice of Medicine Short Book of Homeopathy Clinical Rheumatology Essential Hypertension Prediction, Prevention and Homeopathic Treatment Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder Homeopathic Update Preliminary Guidelines for Research in Homeopathy Viral Hepatitis B Clinical Homeopathic Update Homeopathic Spotlight on Clinical Aspects of Asthma Affective Disorders, Psychological Theories and Homeopathic Approach Question Bank for Undergraduates of BHMS Degree Course Rapid Review in Medicine for PG Students Question Bank for PG Students Sold Multiple Choice Questions for Homeopathic Students Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahil, for your kind words. And uh, I am happy uh, in the sense that I happen to meet you. And uh, it was something which clicked. And we thought we'll come together and we'll have some future discussions where we are having common interest. And uh, today is the day when we are sitting together at this moment and we are going to share our views in respect of Materia Medica. Materia Medica, of course, is a very wide subject and every person has got its own way of dealing with it and so many authors and so many books and so many expressions we have. So it is a very difficult to put up everything in very short time, but then you have your own experiences, your way of dealing with the subject matter, understanding the subject matter. So that particular opportunity is been provided and given to me by a friend of health. So I am really happy and it gives me a lot of pleasure to talk to Dr. Saar today. And if you'll permit me, we'll start with our PowerPoint presentation in terms of a small, you can say, revision of Argentum nitricum. It is not really uh, from the point of view of any particular uh, preparation of the examination, but then we all study from Allen's keynote. Allen's keynote, since the inception of homeopathic education in India, long time back from Calcutta, the Star Wars who traveled from Calcutta to Delhi and at times with the migration of their capital to Shimla, many people who were Bengalis and were serving with the government, they carried their books and studied there, they practiced there. And ultimately when the nation got the capital in Delhi, ultimately people settled in Delhi. The Bengalis were master of art. Everybody was mad about it. And there were people who were living in the United Nations, like United India, in Pakistan. We have Divan Harishan, Vidyan, Vijayachan. They were the light bearers. They came to Delhi. And in North India, it was very late. We started regular systematic studies in homeopathy. But it was a tradition long back in the Calcutta. People were sensitive, educated, and they were master of this art. And everybody practiced, and they read Allen's keynote by heart. They remembered word by word, 
and they always attributed their success to this small booklet. To me, it is a small clinical materia medica which we carry. Beds. You are traveling in a car and you are going to see a patient probably and you want to revise a materia medica in that shape within two minutes. Less than two minutes, you will revise that. Only 10 or 15 lines. But then it gives you tremendous insight if you probably have read other materia medica. Maybe you have read the book, Clinical Applied, which is the Bible of bedside medicine. Then we have Kent Expression which gives you a different dimension, different approach, different level of perception. And here it is a clinical material medical, only symptoms, red line symptoms. And you, you, you have the background information. So you can, within a, one particular word, gives you the long story, which has been described in different works of material medical. Maybe you are referring to our or any other part. So it is a fascinating thing. We started studying Materia Medica through this book for examination. We mugged it up, but if I could not understand. Even today, I find it is the most difficult thing to go into the detail of this particular small booklet. It is a mystery for me. And to resolve this mystery, I have been trying to see this particular book from different angles. And I find it has got different facets. Just like a gem, if you see from a different angle, you find a different glitter. Suddenly that glitter comes to your mind and you say, what it is, which is not seen. I have been wearing this particular diamond for 10 years, but I have been failing to register that this facet has got a different kind of a color shape. Oh my God. So that is what happens if you keep on reading this book, but then you have to go for other works also that gives you the enrichment and understanding of this work. But in nutshell, what I would like to share is, it is a, a small booklet, which is just for prescribing to, we should know what are the rules of homeopathy. And if you know the rules, then we have target is to cure the medicine, diseases and the tools which we have, Materia Medica, to whether it has got good coordination with organon, materia medica, and applied therapeutics. These are the three things which we need to know. And we are going to examine this particular drug from this point of view only. And initially, I would like to share a few things what Helen has written and how, how we should be able to read in between the line, every sentence is a red line symptom, every sentence. So unless and until you start mugging it up, but that is the way how the initial uh, mind is uh, when we are students, we have limited approach and limited understanding of the subject. And easiest way is to mug it up, remember by heart, and we keep on doing it. But understanding comes late. It takes decades to understand what you have been reading in those your younger days. So it will span from my early days to today, how I perceive and how I see the Ellen's keynote. Ellen's keynote is very important because 90% question will come invariably from this book, I tell you. There is no way out. You can use any other text, but then Nothing is going to, 10 or 20 percent will be from other sources. Maybe you will find that few, few bits of information will be from boric bit of rim. People even have tried to uh, take up the text from the Materia Medica Pura, but it doesn't work, you see. <laughs> it, 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 it is more confusing rather than uh, knowing your wisdom and understanding of Materia Medica. And ultimately, you have to fall back somewhere in between. This book and Materia Medica is a very key source of information for all of us. Even today, after such a long time, this book has not lost its value. So we can go ahead with that, my PowerPoint presentation. Good evening. Uh, we are starting with this uh, small PowerPoint presentation of Argentum Nitricum. And this is one of the very important homeopathic remedies. 
and this is the 23rd remedy on the role of Allen's keynote. Its common name is silver nitrate or lunar caustic and its formula is AgNO3. This remedy was proved by Dr. Honeyman and this is the part one where we are going to deal with the review of PQR review from Allen's keynote and this is most suitable for BHMS students and interns. So friends, uh, the Allen's keynote, we are dealing with the matter, subject matter, which is available in this section, uh, in this particular edition of the Allen's characteristic and comparison. This book we are touching at the moment and we need to know before we start with this particular work that this this total work is based on the guiding symptoms of our materia medica which was written by herring and uh, herring uh, basically wrote 10 volumes and out of 10 volumes each drug was having 48 headings out of 48 headings dr allen who was very great admirer of herring picked up certain symptoms which he probably found very important in his clinical practice and randomly he put them uh, in this particular work and uh, that is how the Allen's keynote came into the existence. So each remedy has got small sentences and each sentence gives us a red line symptom or PQR symptom and that is what we generally read. The only drawback what I find as a student that I could not make out from where to stand and where to end. Everything is jumbled up. There is no particular direction. Only red light symptoms. What is the priority? What is the rhythm? What is the flow? Nothing is there. You just keep on reading and you have to make a picture of it yourself to understand it better in, in, in your own perception, how you can study the remedy, you can form the image of the study, whatever the remedy you have studied, that is up to you. So this organized, this particular text I find is disorganized in terms of the sequence and continuity. So, but then same time, we would like to know something about the author. This HCLN was born on February 10th, 1836, in village near London. He received his early education in London, graduated from Western Homeopathic College, Cleveland, Ohio, in 1861, attended College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. After graduation, entered the Union Army, serving as a surgeon under General Grant. After the war, he accepted the professorship on anatomy in his alma mater at Cleveland and in 1875 he moved to Detroit, Michigan and in 1880 he got an appointment as a professor of Materia Medica at the University of Michigan and the turning stone is 1892 he founded the Herring Medical College and Hospital and he held the position of Dean and Professor of Materia Medica until his death on January 22nd, 1909. So this is the text what we'll read in his, this particular work. There are very few lines and text is having the first opening line is acute or chronic diseases from unusable or long continued mental exertion and so long it goes to the relationship, aggravation, amelioration is given, and he ends over there. But then if you study this particular text, you will find there are 21 ideas, total 21 ideas are there. And on the left side of this screen, you will find Argentum Nitricum as it has been given in the text and on the right hand side in the colorful part of the slide you will find that i have demarcated this particular text into each sentence which represents a particular distinct idea or area where it gives you a particular prescribing symptom 
So these are the things which in nutshell you can find in a systematic breakdown of this whole text. We'll see this text one by one so we can understand. On the left hand side, I have highlighted each one of the red line symptom. Different color code is being used to highlight the different sentences and the very first sentence tells you the first PQR is the acute or chronic diseases from unusual or long continued mental exertion. So this tells this particular symptom tells about the causation and this is the diathesis, the people who have inbuilt predisposition to acquire or flare their chronic disease because of stressors. These are the environmental stressors which ultimately bring about, according to your susceptibility, the inner possibility of making yourself sick. There are two things, acute or chronic. <clears throat> the chronic disease usually is because of your constitution and diathesis. Acute disease is because of environmental exciting cause. Acute diseases are running to have a very short duration of time and they will either end into recovery or death. But chronic diseases, once started, will remain throughout with you and they are going to kill you. Second PQR is always think of Argentum nitricum on seeing withered, dried up, old looking patient. Thin, scrawny, sickle core is the medicine. It is a comparison being given. So he talks about the constitution, somatic, physical component of the patient who requires Argentum nitricum has this kind of a body build. And third is the emaciation. Progressing every year, most marked in the lower extremities. And ultimately, you will find the marasmus. The cachexia will be there. Cachexia will be there. Merasmus will be there. There could be many reasons for that reason. Maybe there is a malabsorption syndrome. Maybe there is tuberculosis. Maybe there is malignancy. What causes this kind of merasmus in adult age? Merasmus in children commonly is because of protein calorie malnutrition. But we find here the weakness, emaciation in an elderly person, in a grown-up person, and that emaciation needs to be evaluated, investigated, verified and diagnosed. Maybe it is simple diabetes. You are losing your food in your urine. Maybe there is malabsorption syndrome. What it is, it is up to you and your understanding of the subject you will inquire into and find the suitable answer to the problem. And then only you will be able to help the patient. The fourth PQR here, see the color code, Apprehension. When ready for church or opera, diarrhea sets in. This is the temperament. He is having nervous, anxious temperament, fearful temperament. PQR 5 tells us about time passes slowly. And we have one medicine in bracket for comparison, cannabis indica. Impulsive. Wants to do things in hurry must walk fast, is always hurried, anxious, irritable, nervous. His anxiety doesn't allow him to rest. He becomes short-tempered because of he is so anxious, he cannot concentrate, he cannot remember things. And nervous attitude, temperamental attitude makes him very, very jumpy and small stretch of time looks like miles for him. Time passes slowly. It is how the time registration affects his consciousness. PQR 6, it is the biggest line over here, whatever we have seen so far. So he talks about the particular general. Particular general in head, we have headache. What type of headache? Congestive headache. Sensation is fullness, heaviness, sense of expansion. Habitual, gastric, auditory man. 
people who are sedentary having sedentary habit who are working on their table they are not having physical exertion and they are eating well probably and that causes git disturbances and from git disturbances whenever their stomach is upset probably they get headache also headache from dancing hemicrania he is talking about the migraine now pressive screwing in frontal eminence of temple this hemicrania or migraine is having screwing in frontal eminence on on the one side right or left which is predominantly affected in this medicine ending into the bilious vomiting and we all know that whenever we have the peak of hemicrania or you can say this kind of a headache it it results in bad vomiting and vomiting gives him relief and complaints are worse from any exhaustive mental labor any mental labor brings about the headache and headache is better by pressure or tight bandaging he is not talking here in terms of photophobia or there is a disturbances of noise or something but he gives us the good amount of information about migraine this is almost a classical presentation of classical migraine we can say and other is a dull congestive headache which is related to git disturbances now the pqr7 we go for and here we find that the color code see the corresponding color code it tells us acute granular conjunctivitis the color is scarlet red just like raw beef discharge profuse mucopurulent it is mucopurulent is a kind of infection and most important infection in small kids is gonorrheal infection who babies who are just born they are infected during the passage from the vaginal canal they get the infection to their eyes but otherwise also if you have septic or you can say pyogenic inflammation gonorrheal apart from gonorrhea we have granular conjunctivitis now he talks in the ppr7 about ophthalmia neonatorum profuse purulent discharge cornea is opaque ulceration lids sore thick swollen agglutinated in the morning and some of the good references he gives us about apis merxol and rustox this is a particular general in pqr7 we have these two segment we have seen a which is granular conjunctivitis b part is ophthalmia neonatorum and the c part is the eye strain from sewing any close work maybe you are painting drawing reading or you are going for some stitching work it causes strain eye strain and eye strain is is usually because of there is a constant constriction of the ciliary muscles for the near focus of the your vision and that gives a strain even if you are working on your computer like ruta is the medicine you will find here we find argentum nitricum is also good medicine for that for eye strain and causing strain in the ciliary muscle it is worse in the warm room and better in the open air important remedies which we need to differentiate are natrum mure and ruta diseases due to defective accommodation and defective accommodation usually can start in any age group but generally it is for the near vision in the age group of 40s when you reach 40s and you are doing your table work you are having habit of reading literary work you will find that your accommodation has become defective the ppr8 stands here for craving of sugar child is fond of it but diarrhea results from eating crave salt or smoked meat please refer to calcarea fos here the author is not giving us the total information about the craving of sugar if you can go and refer to the work of kent repertory probably you will come across that the first grade remedies equally good remedies for craving of sugar is additionally we find in argentum nitricum craving for salt also and smoked meat also so this is the desire and elements from elements from 
taking sugar, there is a diarrhea. The same component you will find here, belching accompanies most gastric elements, flatulent dyspepsia, belching after every meal, stomach as it would burst with wind, belching difficult, and finally a rushes out with the great violence. So this kind of upper GIT disturbances of flatulence are usually because of anxiety state. And in anxiety, people keep on swallowing, repeatedly swallowing uh, saliva. And during swallowing saliva, they also swallow the air. So most of the air which is generated in the GIT, maybe 40%, which is because of fermentation of the food carbohydrates which we take. 60% air in Argentum nitricum patient is a solid air. And that is because of anxiety state. He is not free from anxiety any for a single moment of time. And that contributes to flatulent dyspepsia. Another, rub another rubric, you can, another symptom we find in the same segment or same area is the diarrhea. We are talking about GIT. There is a craving, there is a belching, and here we are talking about diarrhea, green mucus like chopped spinach in flakes, turning green after remaining on diaper. So it is a small kid who is having this kind of a diarrhea. Generally, we can also think about one children's remedy, which is very irritable child. You can remember that particular medicine. I am not going to name it. After drinking, after eating candy or sugar, masses of mucolymph in shed, shed is strips or lumps. He gives us the one particular remedy having similar symptom asaram with much noisy platelets like aloes, diarrhea as soon as he drinks arsenic, crotalus, and trombidium is the medicine for comparison we have here. So green mucus diarrhea. So this medicine has got very great action on mucous membrane of GIT tract and also the respiratory tract. PQR9 tells us about urine passes unconsciously day and night. You have constant dipping. Here we have to compare with causticum. It is a neurogenic bladder, maybe some neurological cause is there, but most appropriate cause. If it is peripheral neuritis, single nerve paralysis, causticum is the medicine. Right-sided affection, causticum is the medicine. But if you find that, if the bladder is affected and you have something to remember that it is the spinal cord which is affected, whether it is stabus dorsalis, subacute combined degeneration, or maybe because of vitamin B12 deficiency, whatever may be the reason, if the spinal cord is affected and secondly, the bladder is over distended and maybe there is a dribbling or you can call it, call it neurogenic bladder is the condition. So it has got a very great action on nervous system, peripheral nervous system, as well as central nervous system. PQR10 tells us about importance. Erection fails when coition is attempted. We have comparison with agnus, caladium, and selenium here. Importance here is because of anticipatory anxiety. He has got great apprehension. He is a, a worried about his performance. He is having loss of confidence. And he is not sure about himself. So maybe at times there may not be any neurological component which is responsible for importance, but it is simple anxiety state which makes him erectile disturbances are the main reason here. So it is a psychological cause most often which is responsible for importancy in given case. Now the 11th number we find coition painful both sexes followed by bleeding from vagina and we have the Comparison here for nitric acid, very important medicine. But please remember, painful for both sexes could be only having if they have the fungal infection, if they have diabetes probably, or in elderly persons, when you reach your menopause, 
the vagina is not having good lubrication and there can be the vaginal tract injury during the intercourse which will cause and same state is with the males so post menopausal male or female indulging in coitus most probably will suffer from this kind of a problem so they need to be given certain local creams etc to make it more lubricating the pqr 12 tells us about metrorrhagia and metrorrhagia especially in young widows young widows in cases of sterility also where nervous etherism especially at change of life it is a good remedy for menopausal perimenopausal phase where the constitution agrees if the temperament and constitution agrees probably this is a very good remedy for perimenopausal and menopausal phase of life in a female and if the female is young she has got metrorrhagia which is because of hormonal disturbances this is the medicine now we go to the pqr 13 great longing for fresh air this is a physical general as a whole patient will be happy in outdoors and fresh air ppr 14 tells us about chronic laryngitis of singers the high notes cause cough important remedies we remember alumina argentum metallicum and aurum here uh, chronic laryngitis of singers is because of uh, l- there is a lot of uh speaking like teachers politicians lawyers they keep on speaking speaking and they in this particular way uh, if they are shouting probably they are damaging their vocal cords and vocal cords they get swelling and then you will find once they are swollen you have the laryngitis speaker's laryngitis and that is the state of affair with argentum nitricum PQR 15 tells us about great weakness of lower extremities lower extremities with trembling cannot walk with eyes closed like elumina walks and stands unsteadily especially when he thinks himself unobserved so trembling and inability to walk while closing in eyes tells us about his uh, if the eyes are closed then you cannot Uh, look at the ground and your sense of position is disturbed because you are compensating your sense of position with sensory loss is there in the extremities and your position sensors are not been able to work properly so you compensate with your eyes and vision but when you close your eyes as you are standing in a dark room probably you will fall down standing this is a very typical symptom where we have sensory ataxia sensory ataxia which generally is commonly seen nowadays maybe it is because of posterior white column degeneration which was uh, because of vitamin b12 deficiency subacute combined degeneration or it may be tabes dorsalis which was the history now second world war at that time this particular kind of disease was much more virulent and it was having lot of cases sexually transmitted disease syphilis secondary tertiary syphilis rather when neurological involvement is there and now it is we have diabetic peripheral neuropathy which could be the most common cause of this kind of representation but we have to keep in mind autoimmune disorder which is multiple sclerosis which can also give you the same presentation because it has got different parts of the brain which can get or spinal cord which can get affected and there can be the overlapping of symptoms walking and standing becomes unsteadily especially when he thinks himself unobserved maybe he is trying on his own to stand but then he even even doing unobserved he fails into doing and nobody is observing means it is not doing consciously he is not conscious about what people are watching him so in that state also there is a change in his pathology is there so it is a pathological it is not simply psychological tremors are not psychological trembling can be seen in certain diseases like multiple sclerosis spino cerebellar degeneration that could be the serious areas where we need to ponder upon convulsions preceded by great restlessness so great restlessness 
acts like a uh, exciting cause where we have epileptic convulsions. So it is a general symptom. It is not a particular general. It is physical general. Generally, you will find convulsions given in Kent repertory in general days. So we go to the PQR 17, sensation of splinter in the throat when swallowing and in or about uterus when walking or riding. So these are the areas where the mucous membrane is affected and mucous membrane is having this kind of a swelling, whether it is a vaginal tract in uterus, in the endometrium, but then it could cause a very peculiar sensation as given in this particular rubric, in this particular symptom, PQR 17. Splinter-like sensation is a very particular symptom or you can say very PQR symptom suggesting argentum nitricum. It is a keynote symptom here. And PQR 18 tells us chilly when uncovered, yet feels smothered if wrapped up, craves fresh air. We PQR 19 is in terms of relationship. And here in relationship, we find the first relationship tells us natrum mu or the bad effects of cauterization with nitrate of silver. So it has a historical value. I doubt that this practice is nowadays is carried out. PQR 19B is coffee increases nervous headache. So anxiety, generally people who are anxious, who want to concentrate, they would like to have the coffee and probably coffee is going to create problem here. It is not tolerated. Argentum nitricum patient, instead of getting some mental kick or efficiency, gets nervous headache. It causes anxiety. And then the boy's complaints after using tobacco, even tobacco causes all his complaints worse. Maybe tremors are there or anxiety is there. So these are the things which make worse, especially for Argentum nitricum. And uh, we have to see what are the similar to it. Natromure, nitric acid, glycosis, aurum, and cuprum. These are the medicine for comparison, similar in if they have similar symptoms. And then PQR19, he tells us that after valeriana, lycopodium follows well, especially in flatulent dyspepsia. So flatulent dyspepsia, it is a hysterical kind of a flatulence because of aerophagy. So lycopodium is also a very conscious person. Valeriana is a very known hysterical kind of a remedy. So these are the functional component of these particular remedies, which are very, very important, especially in upper GIT dyspeptic symptom where lot of flatulence is there. Now we go to the next PQR, which is general modality. In general modalities, we find aggravation. Aggravation is by cold food, cold air, eating sugar, ice cream, and usual mental, unusual mental exertion. If you have to use your mind where you find that you have to concentrate more, you are not accustomed to concentrate in serious matters, it soon exhausted, exhausts you and causes aggravation. And then we have the amelioration part. We find patient is ameliorated in open air. He craves the wind blowing on his face. You see, this is a very peculiar symptom. Wind blowing in his face, bathing with cold water. If, if you are standing in front of the fan, in front of the cooler, in front of the AC and the air touching your face, you get quite, quite relief. You see, what happens is we, we have in central nervous system, limbic system, where is the amygdala? Amygdala where the anxiety part is residing. That is the part where the anger is there. That part is surrounded by Sutter's venous channel, the biggest venous channel over there in related to limbic system is the third cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus has got veins which are draining into from the face. Anything from the scalp, frontal reason and maxillary reason, if if there is an infection around your nose, that infection, like folliculitis, if you squeeze it, 
the infection can travel to the venous channel, go into the cavernous sinus, and you will suffer from cavernous sinus thrombosis. This is the applied anatomy. And same time, we can try to explain through this particular phenomena how the wind blowing to his face gives him relief. Because in central nervous system, the the heat in the environment is there. If you are in the warm environment, your face is hot, having warm air coming to your face. That warm air warms up the facial cutaneous tissues and cutaneous tissue which has got blood, that becomes warm and it travels to the cavernous sinus in the center of the brain. And if it is heated up, the core of the brain is heated up, that excites the limbic system and that excitation causes more anxiety, more nervousness, more irritability. And if you going to have the flashes of cold water to your face, if you are standing in front of cold air or AC vent, you instantly feel relieved because the center of the brain, which is receiving the cold blood, which is coming from the face, brings the temperature down at this particular part of the brain where the human emotions reside. Limbic system is emotional brain. And suddenly you find all your complaints are better. The PQR21 tells us about the posology, the 200 or 1000 potency in water as a solution and to be used as topical application in ophthalmia. Neonatorum has relieved when the crude silver nitrate fails. So this is the story, which is a very old story. Nowadays, probably nobody does this kind of a kind of a practice. People uh, uh, go for antipathic treatment and immediately looking at the complications as we have seen already, there is a corneal clouding, which is because of the damage to the cornea, you would like to save the child from this kind of a pathology. So early as the base in such condition, palliative medicine is more important. If you diagnose a case where you have got ophthalmia neonatorum, instead, my personal feeling is going for homeopathic remedy or antipathic, that will be far better. And that is going to save a lot of further damage to the eye. So friends, thank you very much for your patient listening. Please share and care. Thanks. So this was just the first episode of this series of lecture of Arjunum Nitricum. And sir will be enlightening us on more of uh, this Arjunum Nitricum Alansky note approach and how to enrich it with the Borex Materia Medica the Ken's repertory and also the other MCQs which appeared from Arjuna Nitricum in uh, different exams of uh, homeopathy committee exams. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next episodes and give your genuine feedback regarding this episode under the comment section and uh, share with your friends and students, juniors. Thank you.